Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. And thank you for joining us for the first virtual annual meeting of the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Crop Improvement, also known as ILSI. I am Sarah Adeyemar, the program manager coming to you from Cornell University, Ithaca, New York. Earlier this year, before COVID happened to all of us, we hosted a closed door inception meeting in San Diego, where we presented the program's vision, outlined goals, and milestones, discussed engagement with other ongoing complementary programs, and opened the conversation for constructive feedback from our advisory committee, program members, program partners, team leaders, and other key scientists interested in supporting ILC so that it can be and make the greatest impact possible. During this annual meeting, we'll highlight the progress we have made so far among other achievements. I am hopeful that this will be a time of learning, fruitful engagement, and productive use of your time as we sit back and listen to the series of presentations and panel talks, especially um, during today that will be together. Before I give us a snapshot of the agenda we have for today, I'll go over a few ground rules. Because this is a meeting style Zoom call, please endeavor to remember to mute yourself on entry into the meeting. Um, video and audio can be turned on only when presenting. If your bandwidth constraint, we may ask you to turn off your video and present as audio. During the question and answer time, if you will raise your hand and are picked to ask questions, please unmute yourself turn on your video and ask your questions. For those of us who are not familiar with Zoom, please, to raise your hands, you have to click on the participant tab at the bottom of your Zoom window. The blue raise hand button is the very icon you'd see at the bottom left of the participant's window. You can also send questions through the chat box and we'll try our best to go through them all. Next, I would like to share the agenda for today with you. I want you to note that um, today we have um, a welcome address, an overview of the Innovation Lab. We talked about the progress and the vision that we have made so far. And we, this is gonna be followed by a facilitated discussion that is titled Boosting Our Impact Through Strategic Collaborations we have two panel topics or panel talks that talks about the journey to self-reliance and prioritizing breeding for development impact. Then we'll close with feedback and summary from the Fit the Future. Without further ado, we just move on to the welcome address by the Innovation Lab Director. And it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Steve Krisovich. Dr. Krisovich holds a joint appointment with both Cornell and Clemson Universities. Please welcome Dr. Krisovich, over to you. Thanks, Sarah. Um, the last half hour was pretty cool. It was like a reunion day to see so many familiar faces. And um, it's great that you're all here. And thank you very much for your time and support. And I hope this uh, day will be uh, of good value to everybody. Uh, the thanks for joining this session today like everybody, we've had a productive yet challenging year. Today, I'll highlight ILSI progress, our expanded team and our vision for the future. If you're going to require more detailed information, you'll soon be able to view selected recordings of the meeting at our ILSI website. You can view the annual report that will also be at the ILSI website. And as always, you can contact me or anyone in the team for more detailed information about particular topic areas. I remember when 2020 described perfect clear vision. Like you, 2020 has provided anything but clarity. Year one for the ILSI was characterized by a combination of excitement and commitment. But as with any new program, there's always things like institutional orientation, hiring, recruiting, budgeting, logistics, and it's a really big transdisciplinary, transorganizational team. So there's plenty of moving parts. 
also there's intellectual and operational entropy. We can talk to each other day to day, but there's always issues related to message transmitted and message received. So we're getting more and more optimized for doing those type of activities. So let's go into the program itself. The mission, and I wanna highlight just two things here. In the first bullet, what we're trying to do is equip our stakeholders with intellectual and operational resources. That's the foundation of the ILSI, a support and service group. And you'll see in this bullet what we do philosophically, that first bullet is one of the most important tenets for everything that we do. What we're doing is listening to and learning from our NARI leadership, who you'll hear about later today to support their goals as they move ahead. This program is driven by our centers of innovation and our other national partners. And we look to them to provide vision and leadership as we move ahead. And as a reference point, these are our target crops, root tubers, bananas, legumes, excluding soybean and groundnut, millets and sorghum. Now, I showed this slide last year, and I think other people have showed this slide in a number of presentations. It's not the same as last year. And this is a question for you. What's different? At the bottom, you'll see an arrow horizontally that highlights institutional capacities. So we've expanded our efforts to include investigators from the Tata Cornell Institute for Food and Agriculture to conduct research efforts to evaluate broader issues of institutional capacities. And I'll talk more about that later in the presentation. In addition to this linear crop improvement research and tools and technology pipeline, there are other critical cross-cutting issues. And we're going to highlight those. And I'll be honest, this has been a great year and I wanna acknowledge a number of people, particularly that are focused in the cross-cutting issue area. And I'll highlight a bit more about that. They've done a great job to put the science in a broader context. So we're sensitive to broader issues related to the mandates for quality of life, improving life opportunities and things like that. So I've been really, really impressed by the cross-cutting groups activities and look forward to their leadership and vision as we move ahead in the future. So briefly, you're aware of who the management team is. I won't go through that again. The only thing I'd like to highlight are there are people on the right that I didn't want to show their picture because I know there are people like Rob Bertram and Angela here, and they're going to say, how many people do you have in the management entity? Well, these people are associated with the management entity, and a lot of them are actually not funded directly by USAID, but contribute mightily to the program. So I want to acknowledge the significant contributions that are made by everybody on this management team. So I'd like to spend the time now by going into year one highlights, covering quick wins, and I'll explain more about that program. The areas of inquiry that look at tools, technologies, and methods, cross-cutting issues, and centers of innovation activities. I take great pride in this slide because it highlights year one has allowed us to move from concept to an actual functioning scientific network that has global impact by region and by crop, focusing on the science of crop improvement. And I'd like you to think about, as we go through the examples, underlying points that are critically important to how we advance this year. You'll see strategic planning. You'll see open competition. You'll see clear communications and engagement. You'll see commitment to NARI leadership and EOC service and research for, for development and understanding impact. Now I only have about 20 minutes. So there are an incredible number of highlights, but I tried to pick out a, a group of uh, 
areas for advancement, but I'd like to present the breadth of the program and I'll go into those now. So first of all, highlights related to the quick wins. So quick wins basically were identified actually prior to the submission of the proposal, went in with a proposal submission where we focused on short-term project duration, modest investment, long-term impact, but immediately getting rolling on these things. So there were five programs, two in Uganda, Haiti, Nepal, and Senegal. And actually two of these evolved into centers of innovation, the program at Haiti and Senegal. So I wanted to make sure that these programs are noted as foundational. The other thing that's interesting with COVID-19, there was advancement in all the programs. Some were easier to move ahead. Others had more difficulties like we have in the United States. However, everybody made progress and we're looking forward to integrating these quick wins with our other activities as we move along. And just one example is the work in Haiti with the genomic selection for um, multipurpose sorghums. So there's a picture of Gael and his team in Haiti. Now, why I picked this slide is more than just the good quality of work that uh, Haitians are doing. The Haitian project highlights connections between innovation lab, because the work with Gael and some of the team members of Ilse actually was funded under the Sorghum and Millet Innovation Lab. And subsequently, we built on their great progress to advance Gael's program even more. And one of the take home messages from my presentation is, we hope to partner with other innovation labs. And we look forward to doing that. So as appropriate, we're looking for those synergies. Now, th this highlights the areas of inquiry team. It's the strength of the program. This is the backbone and the intellectual group that will support the centers of innovation and the quick wins. Now, one thing I wanna highlight about these area of inquiry teams, you see people who are world famous. Um, there are many other people that are actually not pictured here. So for example, you don't just get Ed Buckler or Jesse Pollan, you get the Buckler and Pollan team. Most of the people that are highlighted here have great people that work with them. So beyond the quality of work and the insights that you get from these area of inquiry leaders, they have great people that are working with them that are contributing as we move along. So I'd like to highlight a couple examples of advancements in the area of inquiry areas tools, technologies, and methods. So this highlights some of the work that Dill, Jesse, and Mike Gore have undertaken in uh, year one. So development of new Pheno apps, updated version of Fieldbook, uh, Mike Gore's work on spectral data analysis, R package, and then Dill's been working uh, intensively to develop new targets and new methods to use GC mass spec for high throughput compositional analyses. And those were, that work is ongoing across the world at this time. So for example, here's a picture of Trevor Reif from Jesse's program, highlighting some of the work that he's doing actually in the field in Nepal, just before the COVID-19 epidemic. Breeding informatics. The leadership there is provided by Kelly Robbins. So Kelly, and as you all know, Kelly's had a great um, connection and is actually a module leader with excellence in breeding program. So through Kelly, we hope to have coordination where we're avoiding redundancies and building complementation as we do the research. And Kelly's work in bioinformatics, bio, biometrics and data management are critical to EIB, the ELC program, and just about everybody else that's moving in this domain. So they've been developing software framework for uh, web applications for BRAPI. And the initial work is focused on developing a BRAPI uh, authentication framework that will enable development of breeding decisions. And here's an example of some of the output from screenshots from the work that Kelly has underway. Next, institutional capacity evaluation. 
This area is expanded and will be expanded in year two. It's led by Prabhu Pingali and Matthew Abraham with great assistance from Greg Traxler who previously worked at uh, Bill Melinda Gates Foundation. So there's a really good team of people that are focusing on the institutional capacity evaluation. Moreover, they have close um, cooperation with the people in the BPAD program, the Breeding Platform Assessment Tool. So there's good communications going back and forth to not only look at capacity within the breeding program, but looking at the broader institutional capacity across the groups. And I wanna highlight, their work is not um, count numbers and look for things that are metrics. They're really trying to do research to identify bottlenecks and resolve those bottlenecks in the future. So they, they're working closely with the area of inquiry leaders in this first year. And in year two, they really are um, aggressively getting ready to integrate and work with some of the centers of innovation that have been identified. Uh, again, uh, I wanna highlight the cross-cutting team and the quality of work that they've undertaken in year one. Elizabeth Garner has been the team leader. This team has worked diligently with all the centers of innovation, with the area of inquiry leaders and just about anybody that plays an important role in this program to help us orient and better understand the broader context of our work and the impact that our work can have down the road. So building the LC core team and COI's understanding of values and inclusion of gender and youth at, an, at the inception meeting. And also through this, the, this year, this group has been very, very ambitious and aggressive to implement opportunities for distance learning, particularly with COVID-19 and what we can do down the road. So. Uh, focusing on the themes of gender, youth, resilience, and nutrition. Okay. Here's an example of some of the things that they've been working on. I should have advanced that slide a little faster. I apologize for that. Um, the centerpiece of year one has been the identification and the launching of the centers of innovation. This was an intense open competition led by Holly Tufan with significant input from others. But the whole idea of this approach, when we sent out the call for requesting letters of intent, we received over 100 letters of intent from over 25 different countries. We're looking for engagement. Besides identifying these quality centers of innovation, we've identified other great partners that didn't win this competition, but down the road will be great team partners as we advance our programs in the out years. So we now have a network of at least a hundred groups that we're aware of their priorities, their capabilities and how they can do things to work with us in the future. The centers of innovation are hubs of improvement in particular regions. And initially we'll focus in um, Latin America, Caribbean, West Africa, and East Africa. The programs are funded at a million dollars a piece and they're covering three years. And these are the centers of innovation leaders. I can't stress to you how excited the OC team is to have these partners join our activities. In an unusual collaboration between Coast, Costa Rica and Haiti with uh, Roberto and Gael, to focus on um, bean, sweet potato, and sorghum. And that work is underway. Senegal, another leader in West Africa that will focus on sorghum's millet and cowpea led by Jito Khan. And two new partners that we're really, really excited about engagement. Uh, in Uganda, Scovia Atikina that will lead the East African Center of Innovation for finger millet and sorghum. And then in Malawi, uh, Michael Chapetta who will lead the program that will focus on predominantly cowpea for South and East Africa. These people have worked really hard. They've done a great job in providing insights and leadership with our backbone of researchers in the LC. 
and we look forward to launching off with them in the future. It's a great source of pride for all of us. So welcome again and thank you for joining the team. Okay, lastly, year two plans. We want to invest, integrate, and expand. So for an example of an investment, we want to launch off with our quick wins and centers of innovation. But through the uh, centers of innovation competition, as I noted, we identified other key partners. And a fundamental goal of the Innovation Lab is to be global. So in year two, we intend to expand the program to develop some anchor efforts in Asia. Also to balance our work in the different crops, we have a significant amount of effort in sorghum and cowpea. We intend to find targeted programs in root and tuber crops and bananas that we'll engage in in year two. And then through the activities of the area of inquiry leader and cross-cutting leaders, we'll look at tools, technologies, and methods, transfer, and potential use. Um, Jeff Morris in trade discovery has, uh, with his go high approach, will really try to look at these technologies and see based on really the priorities of the national programs to see if they actually fit and have a place in their crop improvement program. We wanna integrate areas of inquiry, cross cutting issues and key partners and look for additional training opportunities and cross cutting issues. We've invested significantly more money in cross-cutting issues, actually based on the recommendations of the cross-cutting team. And lastly, we want to expand strategic and external partnerships. A number of you are on this uh, conference and we're excited to have you in and understand what we're doing and look forward to identifying future partnerships that make sense to build our pipeline. So whether it's in seed systems or product product life cycle mapping or priority setting. We're looking for ways to develop new associate wards that complement our current activities. And we look forward to working with USAID mission people to expand the program as well. So with that, 